today. How can your game be cozy if your devs aren't cozy too? This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where we're always on time and under budget. The show costs us literally nothing to make. Well, what about Paul's time? Surely he has something better to do. No, no, I literally don't. If you're like me, your eye appointment is next week, and you'd better go because you also appreciate noticeably nice animation. And when it comes to game animation, Apex Legends has some of the nicest. First-person perspective is tricky when you're trying to reproduce accurate size and motion of entirely imaginary objects. So to do it well, just do what most artists do. Cheat! Or more appropriately, use reference materials. Yeah, but for real, it's not cheating to use reference materials. People do it in every job. It's why checklists and textbooks exist. Respawn Entertainment animator Hayden Cooper gave away the secret at 2024's GDC. To get great first-person reference videos, stick a pop socket on your cell phone and shove it in your mouth. The... the mount, not the phone. No, turn it. Here, it should, it should look like this. The advantage this has over an action camera strapped to your forehead is that the camera is more believably closer to the position of your eyes, and thus your arms don't feel like they're coming out of your hips. To research this story, I spent seven minutes watching a compilation called New Seer Heirloom All Animations for Apex Legends, and was delighted by the wide variety of different ways you can present a pair of round knives. And hey, complicated weapon carries might be old hat to you, but I'm from the Doom generation, so this was fresh and new. And because I'm from said generation, I spent another seven minutes with my head between my legs because all of the motion made me queasy. But they looked correct. I felt much more immersed in the game as if I really was a recon unit with dexterous fingers and a mild case of vertigo. Hey, Overwatch 2, everything okay over there, buddy? Oh, that's rhetorical. Of course it's not. Kotaku reports, to, from speaking to a bunch of former Overwatch 2 developers on the condition of anonymity, that the original plan for the game's PvE missions has been diminished, underfunded, sidelined, and now possibly quietly forgotten altogether by everyone's favorite thing, executive meddling. That's right, the devs paint quite a picture, a far cry from the initial promise, the very excuse for that game's existence. Two pillars, multiplayer PvP, single player PvE, existing side by side. No more. A frequent specter of dread was that of blizzard quality, the nebulous mark of approval the game must live up to a certain standard, but apparently most often used as an excuse by senior managers to kick things down the line and delay projects that should have been achievable. And even when they had a plan, it was allegedly to release three story missions every 18 months, which is a ludicrous roadmap, and that was before the post-merger layoffs. Kotaku sources aren't even sure who's left that's able to, to deliver on the now much smaller plans. Blizzard also recently changed the menu interface that to practically hide the story missions that do exist, and all of this seems to just mark an unspoken nail in the coffin of PvE. Furthermore, in a move that Blizzard actually announced themselves, Overwatch 2 is moving all the new heroes out of the battle pass and into general revenue, which just means that going forward everyone can play all the heroes. And of course this move is being received by Overwatch players and observers alike as literally how it should have been since the game launched, but clearly the execs knew better. So now, the game that was supposed to live alongside the beloved blockbuster, with its twin pillars of PvP and PvE, has instead just replaced the original Overwatch and abandoned the whole excuse for, his, for its existence. It's sad to report, but I guess this is now Blizzard quality. Stardew Valley has just received its long-awaited update to version 1.6. So without further ado, let's find out what's new. First up, and we're just learning this now, creator Eric Barone, aka Concerned Ape, likes to wear a comfortable jacket. No word on whether his Levi's Sherpa-lined men's trucker jacket has indeed made it into the game as a wearable item, but you can get your own for about a thousand Norwegian kroner. Also, if you're like me, you rest your sleepy head in a buckwheat pillow every night. Well, so does Concerned Ape. 
The one listed in Polygon's GQ loadout steal his bed article is over a hundred bucks, but the sole programmer, composer, and artist didn't share how much his cost. I got mine at Bed Bath & Whatever for about 40 bucks Canadian after grabbing a coupon out of someone's mailbox, possibly my own. Concerned Ape also keeps some sort of electric salt lick on his desk to hold his headphones. Which I think is actually a pretty cool way of turning a unitasker into a multi-use objet d'art. Polygon didn't provide a price for said lick, but I've been to Winners recently and you can pick up a really tall Himalayan pink salt grinder for like nine bucks. So you don't have to go all the way to the base of Chumalungma to pick up a bargain on cutting edge style. Phantom Tax Extra, my Ohio. Hey, quick audience poll. When you hear the words plans to adapt a beloved video game franchise into a movie, who shudders? Most of you justified. Video game movies have a very spotty track record. For every Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which I was told was honestly just good and fun, there's, well, Five Nights at Freddy's, Mortal Kombat, Prince of Persia, about a million different Resident Evil movies, a different Mortal Kombat, I could go on. Video game movies are tough. But what if it was a video game movie produced by Margot Robbie's production company, Lucky Chap, aka the people that turned Barbie into a $1.4 billion blockbuster that was actually good? And what if it was going to be directed by Kate Herron, aka the person who directed the first season of Loki, which was... pretty alright compared to some of the other stuff Marvel's been shoveling out. Are you feeling a bit more optimistic? Yeah! Now what if I told you the franchise they're adapting was gonna be... The Sims! Yeah! But, but, but... Lucky Chap does seem to have good taste, and The Sims doesn't have a huge overarching story with deeply nuanced characters and world building that'll be completely turfed in service of trimming the runtime to a brisk 90 minutes of mandated plot beats. And there's a high chance we get to see a beloved celebrity cameoing as Drowning Sim, so that's gonna be fun. Or at least weird. And if Margot Robbie is in her, I have more money than God, and I'm gonna use it to make movies about things that personally appeal to me phase, to meme, good for her. Break that glass ceiling. Tarantino gets put foot stuff into all his movies. Why can't we have a movie about what happens when you trap a sexy alien cult in a room with lots of fireworks and no doors? I'm pretty sure I've had that dream where Margot Robbie talks to me in Simlish. Everyone has bees. You're not special. Mm. Coming up. Plunderstorm is bringing the brand new multiplayer game mode known as Battle Royale to World of Warcraft, while at the same time capitalizing on the massive wave of popularity for pirates thanks to Ubisoft's breakout hit Skull and Bones. End sarcasm. Oh, I read the stage direction. Can I take that again? I guess it's just me and you for the after chat, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Condition of anonymity. Anonymity? <laughs> Did you see that uh, the editor-in-chief of Kotaku is resigning? Yeah, because they're only going to do guides now and not any actual news. Brutal. They had to do 50 guides a week or something ridiculous. How are you? That's not attainable. <laughs> it's like there's just there isn't that much to know about video games. Mm -hmm. Well, I look forward to when they get written by AI uh, and they're all wrong. And uh, Geo Media, who has uh, systematically ruined every single property they bought from like the big Gawker, because Gawker, Jezebel, Kotaku, Lifehacker, all of that used to be owned by the same group, and they were all mm. fairly profitable. And Geo Media bought it and has systematically been ruining every single one. Yeah, it feels weird to be like, man, things were better when Gawker was in charge, but here yeah. we are. Here I mean, we are. Ugh. I'll just go back to Game Facts. Yeah, I mean, everybody wants, we already have Game Facts. <laughs> Game Facts, as I recall, was not a massively successful site and for in terms of like revenue and stuff like that. I think IGN bought them. Yeah, because but... yeah, all the Game Facts stuff is now under IGN. Like, why would you compete with IGN? They've already got the, I don't know. Oh, so depressing. We read about that on the, the Aftermath, which is a new games reporting website that Gita Jackson and a bunch of other people work at. I think Luke Plunkett as well, who's formerly of Kotaku. Yeah, part of the uh, the uh, stream of uh, people 
set, starting up uh, cool new um, companies in the wake of uh, terrible uh, layoffs. Yeah, and the the recent spring ups in the media environment have been 404 Media, which is really good, which is a bunch of former Vice people cover, sort of covering tech and stuff like that. There's The Aftermath, which is a bunch of former sort of a who's who of games journalists. Kyle Orland, who used to work for Axios, I believe, now does his own Substack, which I'm very tempted to subscribe to literally for business, which I, I that's that's his use case. And uh, and of course, um, you know, Second Wind. Yes. The former escapist folks. And, yeah. And uh, Phoenix something, I believe, is another group of people. Anyway, a lot of people with references to the fact that they were from somewhere else and are now, now trying, do, trying on their own. Yeah, now doing their own thing and sort of doing a more like direct reader support thing like Patreon or something like that or like, you know, a Substack fee. And good, good for her. Right to all of them, get out from those corporate thumbs where they don't understand you and just see you as a dollar sign. Patreon.com slash loading ready run. Yeah, we see you as dollar signs. Wait, no, 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 little, 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 little. No, there's no other news. Peace, all. <laughs>